What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released iOS 17.1 RC, or Release Candidate. Now along with this RC, we also got the Release Candidate versions for iPadOS 17.1, WatchOS 10.1, macOS Sonoma 14.1, tvOS 17.1, and HomePod version 17.1. But of course, we're focusing primarily on iOS and iPadOS here. So you can see the update came in at a large, almost six and a half gigabyte size on my 15 Pro Max. That size, of course, is large since we're going from a beta to essentially a final release with the RC version. So let's go ahead and check out the new build number in our settings, general about. The new build is 21B74. And the modem firmware for the 15 series is 1.12.00. All right, so now what's new here in the RC version of iOS 17.1? And you know, aside from the big music changes that we got, so where you can favorite artists and you can filter your playlists and your albums by favorited. So you can go up here and tap on favorited and kind of just filter everything else. And we have better suggestions and a lot of changes in the music application, which we've talked about over the past few weeks. But aside from that, I think one of the biggest features in this update is going to be inside of our settings and then into general and then into airdrop. And that is this right here, where you can now use airdrop even when you're not right next to another phone. So if you're out of range, your you know transfer will still continue over the internet. So that along with many other features have been added here in iOS 17.1, of which I will talk about in my final what's new video that's coming next week. But in this video, I wanna focus on things that are new that I've not already talked about for the past few weeks during the beta cycles. So in the release notes, Apple says that home key support has been added for matter locks. So if you have a matter lock in your home, you now have home key support, which is a pretty big deal. And then also in the iPadOS 17.1 RC version, I would assume that we have support for the new Apple Pencil with USB-C that was just announced today. So if you follow me on Twitter or X, you saw that they did announce a new Apple Pencil this morning, but not a new iPad. So this update most likely adds support for that pencil. This update also fixes a lot of issues that people were facing over the past couple of weeks. And the first one I want to talk about is actually a major one. And that's the very last bullet point that Apple mentions down here, where it says fixes an issue that may cause display image persistence. So if you don't know what that is, that's what a lot of people refer to as screen burn in. So they're not necessarily the same thing, but a lot of people were talking about pretty much all over the past week, a lot of people are mentioning how the iPhone 15 has a hardware defect. The display is defective because you can see, you know, outlines of applications, your lock screen, things like that after you turn the device off. A lot of people called that screen burn in and thought it was a hardware defect. Well, looks like Apple has fixed that via software with iOS 17.1. And this is very reminiscent of the green tint issue. If you remember back in, I believe, 2020, a lot of people had an issue on their display with green tint, and that was also resolved via software update when a lot of people thought it was a hardware defect. So if you personally faced this screen burn-in issue, please let me know in a comment down below if it has been fixed for you after updating to the RC version. I know Apple says it's been fixed, but I like to hear from people you know that actually face this issue to make sure it's been fixed because me, myself, I've not faced this. There's also a big fix for the keyboard. So a lot of people had issues with the keyboard lagging and freezing. That appears to be fixed here in 17.1 because Apple says that this update fixes an issue that may cause the keyboard to be less responsive. This update also resolves an issue where the names of incoming callers may not appear when you're on another call. So this happened to me once, and this happened when I was on 17.0. So this has been fixed here in 17.1. And basically what happens is if you're on a phone call and somebody else calls you, it will only show their picture. It will still show their contact poster, but sometimes it will not show the name of that contact. So that has been fixed. Apple also mentions that custom and purchase ringtones now appear once again under the text tone section. So if you want to set a custom text tone, you now have the ability to do that again, whereas that was not available before. That was a bug. There was also a big fix for screen time. So a lot of people had major issues with screen time and Apple appears to have fixed that here saying improved reliability of screen time settings syncing across devices. And the other two I want to mention that we have not talked about before are this one right here where it says fixes an issue that may cause the significant location privacy setting to reset when transferring an Apple Watch or pairing it for the first time. And then also we have something that I called like over a year ago, and that is that crash detection optimization have been added again for the 14 and 15 models. I said that 
that last year during a software update that we're going to be getting optimizations or fixes to this for the next year or two, maybe even longer. And that appears to still be the case. It seems like Apple really has to work out the kinks and, you know, not having that false trigger because that's caused a lot of issues with first responders responding to an accidental trigger at a theme park or something like that. So that should be better again with 17.1. And as expected, we do not have the journal application yet. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, we're probably not getting that in 17.1. That is most likely coming in 17.2, which, you know, is kind of similar to the freeform application last year, which came in 16.2, not 16.1. So I would expect to see the journal app in 17.2. Now, as far as the performance and the battery life goes, I've not really noticed any difference, but I've only been using the software for about an hour. So it's really hard to say just yet. I will have a better, you know, update for you guys and more of a real life experience by this weekend. I will give you a follow up review on the software this weekend and of course in my what's new video next week but i'm going to run a quick geekbench 6 test here to see how we score all right so we scored a 2932 on the single core and a 7316 on the multi-core and you can kind of see here how that compares to previous versions so it looks like we scored higher than the previous beta so that's a good sign and of course i will run another geekbench test later this week into this weekend to see how those scores hopefully improve. And then as far as the battery life goes, you guys can tell me what I started this video at, but I think battery life so far seems about the same. And like I said, it's really hard to tell. So I will give you guys an update after using the software for a little while this weekend and in my what's new video. And speaking of that what's new video, let's talk about when we can expect to see iOS 17.1, the final release. So next week is when we're gonna see that. The RC version, the release candidate, is just the final version for beta testers. So that means Means that the public is coming next week and I would guess that it's coming right there on Monday the 23rd. It is possible to come on a Tuesday the 24th but I give that like less than a 5% chance. So I'd say a 95% chance that the update comes out on Monday the 23rd. And then after that we should see iOS 17.2 betas begin. So it could come as early as the very next day on Tuesday the 24th or we could wait until sometime in late October maybe on Halloween or even later into November it's really hard to tell right now but don't be surprised if we get a 17.2 beta 1 the day after 17.1 releases so yeah that is iOS 17.1 at the RC build like I said if you had the screen burn-in issue please let me know if this update has fixed it for you and I'm really curious to see if that's been fixed via software because that's a fascinating bug that again we haven't really seen since the green tent bug in 2020. Oh, and one last thing I wanted to mention is that the airdrop speeds seem to have been improved here with not just the RC, but also I first noticed it in beta three. So this doesn't have anything to do with name drop or, you know, airdrop when you just hold devices next to each other. I'm talking about physically going into photos and then going to airdrop something. I noticed that it's faster for some reason here in the 17.1 betas so that could have something to do with the new airdrop feature where it finishes you know over the internet this feature right here it could have something to do with that but it just seems like everything is a little bit faster with airdrop so that is also a welcome change i've noticed but anyways that's 17.1 the rc build stay tuned for my what's new video next week where i cover all of the new features and changes in depth i didn't want to just cover everything in this video and make a duplicate video next week so hope to see you guys there hope you enjoyed this video if you did i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 17 videos like this one but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon